So this video is going to be about the making of this weatherproof, waterproof Raspberry Pi Zero W camera case. I wanted to put a few around the house and I figure I need to protect them from the elements. I thought if I sort of stack the camera on top of the Raspberry Pi board it would give me the tightest form factor and the case built still built quite a bit bigger than the, the board and the camera itself. And the main driving feature that made the case so big was that window. It's a 2x2 two two borosilicate glass window. I wanted to make sure that uh, the camera wasn't seeing any of the case, so I made sure to go big enough. I like to do the cam programming in one assembly where I have all the parts in the different operations. That's what you see here. The sort of translucent boxes around the parts are the stock material, and the parts inside them are the parts I want to machine. The first operations are done in vice, and the second operations are done on this fixture plate held down with bolts from the bottom. You see all those extra holes in the fixture plate because I'm reusing it from another job. My general plan when making parts like this is to remove as much material as possible in the first operation and give myself all kinds of features to pick up off for the second operation. In this case, I've got features that'll let me both hold the, the parts from the bottom for the second operation, as well as some 3 16 dowel holes to locate them. You see a little breaking through of the walls there in the simulation from the drilling operation. I do a little cheat on the cam side as I've only got one drill chuck. I insert smaller drills where needed, but the system thinks there's a quarter inch drill loaded in there at all times. I'm using 1 8 inch O-rings to make sure everything is watertight. The actual cross-sectional diameter of the O-ring is 139 thou, and this groove width is 129 thou, and I'm cutting it with a 1 8 inch end mill. It lets me get enough squeeze on the o-ring to make sure it sits tight in the groove but not too much that it doesn't fit or doesn't deform when everything's fastened down. The first thing to do in the second operation on the fixture plate is to remove all the stock material above the part. This is the material that we use to hold onto the part in the first operation in the vise. In this case I'm doing two parts at the same time. When on the fixture plate I like to do as many parts at the same time as possible because I don't have a tool changer. If I'm doing two parts, it lets me essentially cut the number of tool changers in half. The next few shots, I'm going back and forth between actual machining and the stock simulation. You'll notice the machining is quite a bit slower, although I am pushing the feeds and speeds because this is only plastic. I've not yet found the limit of how hard you can cut this stuff on my little mill. Uh, it machines really easily with a really nice surface finish, and it's a lot of fun to work with. We're squeezing in the o-ring here. The o-ring groove's 10 thou smaller than uh, the o-ring itself, so it takes a little bit of push to get it in, but it seats quite nicely and kind of stays with the parts for assembly, which is really handy. The fit between the parts is uh, 5 thou per side, so kind of 10 thou total clearance. It's a little bit loose, I could have gone tighter, but it's fine for this application. Here we see the Raspberry Pi on the board, the borosilicate glass against the uh, O-ring, and the kind of retainer plate holding it back in. Everything fit quite nicely, although uh, I later found out there was a little goof. When the SD card is in the Raspberry Pi, it does kind of fit size on size against the case, and so I'll have to cut open a you know, 10 to 20 thou notch on that side on the next one. I decided to solder 5 volts directly to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi instead of using the micro USB adapter just to keep the form factor small. And I also uh, put some desiccants into the case that I got on Amazon for about 40 bucks. I put them in a tea bag and taped it shut. Maybe not the most elegant solution, but hopefully it works. The weak point in the waterproof design is definitely this cable grommet. It's allegedly submersible, but we'll see how it goes after some time outside. I got the articulating ball mount off Amazon for about 10 bucks and it threads into one of the same quarter 20 holes we used in OP2 to fix the workpiece down to the fixture plate. So all the hardware is in place and working as intended. I'm struggling a little bit now on the software side. I, I wrote a script that uploads a photo to Dropbox every five minutes, but as the light conditions outside change, the camera decides on different compression settings and so when I lace the images together for a time lapse, I get a pretty bad flicker. So. If anybody's got any experience with time lapses on a Raspberry Pi using the Raspberry Pi camera, 
I would be very interested to hear about any tips that might be able to help me out. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Cheers.